morning and welcome to our global health cast summary on dengue. Today, you will hear clinical aspects of dengue presented to you by Melvin Senecas. Good morning to Switzerland. Good morning, Melvin. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone watching us today. Um, I will be presenting a short summary of the clinical aspects of dengue. And really, the, the febrile phase or the phase where the person has fever starts when the patient develops sudden onset of high fever, and it's often accompanied by headache, muscle pain, and gastrointestinal symptoms. And this phase usually lasts around three or seven days, um, and during which time the, the virus, the, the viremia, or the level of the virus in the patient um, peaks. The critical phase is really day two to three, um, around the time when the, the fever starts to go down and when the severe complications can show um, in a small portion of patients. And the final phase is the recovery phase, which lasts around two to five days when the patient's symptoms resolve and clinical parameters start to normalize. On the next slide, you will see that um, severe diseases, severe disease or the severe manifestation of, of dengue cannot really be predicted and they can develop without warning signs. But for clinicians, the important warning signs to watch out for that can indicate a potentially severe dengue infection consists of abdominal pain, persistent vomiting, um, accumulation of fluid, mucosal bleeding, um, hepatomegaly or the enlargement of the liver beyond the, no the normal size. Um, increased hematocrit or the percentage by volume of red blood cells in your blood with a decreased platelet count. And these warning signs um, have been found to be valuable in case management of, of dengue infection. On the next slide, you will see a very important concept when we talk about dengue. So when a dengue infection of the same serotype infects an individual, existing antibodies can neutralize those dengue viral particles. But when pre-existing antibodies present in the body is from a, from a primary dengue infection, so the first dengue infection, bind to a, an infecting dengue virus particle during a subsequent infection with a different dengue serotype, the virus is not completely neutralized, and this is when antibody enhancement occurs. On the next slide, you will see um, that just looking at the signs and symptoms, it is difficult to really have a definite diagnosis, diagnosis of dengue. Other diseases um, with similar symptoms include malaria, influenza, Zika, chikungunya, measles, uh, yellow fever. So it is really important to obtain a detailed history of um, travel, exposure, and of course, testing. So on the next slide, you will see the common tests being recommended to diagnose dengue. So you have the IgM. This test looks for IgM antibodies in the blood, which appears in the early course of the disease. There's a test for the IgG. Um, this test is used to detect infection in the latter course of the disease. And then you have the dengue NS1 test, which detects the non-structural pro non -structural protein or the NS1 of dengue virus. Um, this is secreted into the blood during dengue infection, and this is detectable during the acute phase of dengue. Um, and NS1 tests can be as sensitive as molecular tests during the first uh, seven days of symptoms. After day seven, NS1 tests are not recommended. And then we have the neutralization tests or the PRNT, and they are used to measure neutralizing antibodies and are used to determine the serotype of the virus. And this is not routinely used. And then on the next slide, you will see the different dengue podcasts that we have. These are the long versions discussing dengue vaccines with Professor Tino Schwartz, uh, clinical aspects with Professor Leon Honam, and Dengue as a Complex Disease with um, Professor Marco Safadi. 
Thank you, Melvin. That was a very nice summary on the uh, different aspects of dengue. And I just want to highlight again here this antibody disease enhancement where the antibody, instead of killing the virus, the antibody from a previous infection, instead of killing another serotype infection coming along, it brings the virus into the body and the, body can, the virus can replicate in the body and then you have more severe disease. I would not know any other disease where this has been observed. To the best of my knowledge, this is the only uh, disease where uh, antibodies, immunity actually, are not protecting but increasing disease severity. Uh, am I right here or would you have another example uh, with antibody-mediated disease enhancement? Well, Professor, in the early part of the pandemic, people were concerned that this could happen with SARS-CoV-2, right? With the different variants, with the right. alpha, beta, delta, but this was not the case. Yeah. So I think this is the only example where this occurs. And um, this is something to worry about, particularly when it comes to vaccine development. And please look at our vaccine podcast on dengue virus, and there you will hear more about what is available today and uh, what to worry about when these vaccines are used. Melvin, thank you very much for your presentation and uh, goodbye to you for today. Thank you, everyone.